Hello everyone, this is Mrs. Toops, and this short video will summarize how to make a graph. A graph, as you know, is just a pictorial representation of information that typically you will have taken from a data table in an experiment. Most of the graphs that we create in our class will be just simply um, representing the data or the average data that we have collected um, when we conduct an experiment in pre-AP biology. We know that you know how to make a graph. So uh, what I want to focus on here is just uh, kind of summarize the, the steps at the top of the page that you might want to just make a few additional notes. Number one, um, some, some of our little um, pet peeves are, number one, graphs should always be made on graph paper. You can get a piece of graph paper from your teacher, you can buy a pack of graph paper, you can even download graph paper um, free online and print your own, but all graphs must be done on um, legitimate graph paper. Two, all graphs should be done using a ruler and color pencils, uh, or a pencil if, that, if that's um, sufficient. It uh, just depends on the type of graph. But uh, we want you to use pencils so that you can easily correct mistakes. Your graphs should also use all of the graph paper. In other words, don't have a you know eight and a half by eleven piece of graph paper and your graph in the first you know ten little um, uh, cells down at the bottom of the page where you can barely see it. We want you to to spread it out and make it really really pretty. Um, Primarily, we will be doing two types of graphs. We will be doing line graphs and we will be doing bar graphs. Um, a bar graph is simply going to show a quantitative comparison between things that are not necessarily continuous data. For example, I'm going to go back to um, an example I used in one of the earlier videos. Let's say you're, you're checking uh, whether or not the, the butterflies in your garden are attracted to certain colors of flowers more than others. Well, you're going to count the number of butterflies that land within a given time frame, and your, um, your independent variable in that case is going to be the flower color. Well, flower color is not a continuous uh, data set, so you would use a bar graph in that, bar graph in that case, um, whereas things like uh, time or even uh, in this case, I could argue for the one that's in your uh, in your packet, uh, you use a line graph if it's over a continuous uh, stream or if it's it's something that you could predict. Maybe you have data points for, uh, in this example, the data point for the average amount with 10 milliliter, average amount with 20 and 30. You could do a line graph in this case. Um, even though you didn't specifically measure, say, 18 milliliters of water, you could predict it with a line graph. So in this example that's given in your in your packet, uh, you could really have done this uh, either way. Most of the time, we will make it clear, and you will understand when to use a bar graph and when to use a line graph. So um, that's, that's step one, is just figuring exactly what type of graph you're going to make. And then you're going to show your independent variable and your dependent variable. Your IV is always going to go on your x-axis, and your DV is always going to go on the y-axis. It is very important that you label the axes with titles, units, and the increments. If you look at the example at the bottom of the page, notice where they have amount of water in milliliters. That's the title and the units. And then where they have 0 to 10 to 20 and 30, those are the increments that the, that the lines represent. Same over on the left side. There's average growth in millimeters and then the, uh, the numbers that are going to represent the height of those bars. So it's very, very important that as you develop a graph that it's labeled properly. Uh, a graph without proper labels is absolutely meaningless. So it's important to, to make sure your reader understands exactly what they're looking at. Now, I kind of hacked this data table up earlier with all of the things that were wrong with it, of what not to do in a data table. Um, and so hopefully you can go through there and make those corrections again, um, eliminate the redundancy in the units in each cell, and notice that what they graphed 
was actually the average. Um, and so it's very important, too, that if, if it is a derived column, or I'm sorry, derived quantity, that you indicate that in your title. So here where it says average plant growth, just saying plant growth in millimeters would be incorrect because it is a derived quantity. It is the average uh, plant growth. Um, I think that's about it. You can, we'll, we'll have plenty of practice in class, but I just wanted to make sure that you understand um, our expectations. Use graph paper, use a pencil, use a ruler, and make sure that you have a title and appropriate labels. Thanks a lot, and I hope this was helpful.